To my channel today i'm going to be showing you how i compost in a small flat in london but i will preface this with saying that i do have an outside space that's connected to my flat block so we do have an outside composting system as well but i use an indoor one called a bokashi uh, this is just the one that i found that was easiest to use inside if you don't have a compost collection service and i got this from my friend uh, laura from hetu she uses the bokashi so i decided Decided I will try to use it as well and I'm just going to show you how I use it today. What I will say though is when I use it after it's been fermenting for about two to three weeks I then transfer it to the outside composting system. So while it is great for indoor flats and little small spaces and stuff like that I just wanted to preface this with a warning saying I do have an outside space that I am then able to transition it to so that it can continue its fermentation and just become soil again or not soil but uh, it can break down into the soil and you know compost properly if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and like and share comment and subscribe if you have any ways that you do it that are different please share in the comment section below because your advice is always super helpful not just to me but to everyone else who is watching this and again I am very new to the Bokashi so I will put some other links down below for more information because I Again, I was still learning, but I have made a few mistakes, which I am able to share with you guys today. So with the Bokashi system, you'll get a box like this. And you'll also get onto the right, there is a kind of squisher downer. <laughs> That's definitely not what it's called, but it's basically something that allows you to squish down the material inside so that you don't let any air in, because this is a system that requires no air so that it can ferment properly, which is really great. Then underneath you can see there is a little white pot that's for when you open up the tap and you let the kind of bokashi tea come out. You want to make sure your stuff inside is as dry as possible. So every few days you'll turn the tap and the liquid will come out and what you can do with that liquid is actually dilute it and either put it on your pot plants inside or outside. Now you'll probably want to do about one tablespoon to a gallon of water which is just over three liters of water because it is very concentrated. But you can also, if you don't have enough pot plants inside, can put it outside in a garden, give it to a neighbor, take it anywhere with someone who has a garden and help. And then to the left, you can see there is the Bokashi bran. This is what actually helps the fermentation process. And I've made the mistake before of not putting enough in the actual Bokashi when you are allowing it to ferment. And it's super important that you do Otherwise it will rot and if it rots then it will smell really bad and you know you've done something wrong. So you want to use enough so that every single piece of food or organic matter that you put in your Bokashi is covered with at least a few pieces of bran. Seems a little bit obsessive but you absolutely have to do it because the smell honestly is hideous. So to make my life a bit easier when I'm chopping stuff and cooking I tend to have this little caddy on the side of the counter just so it's much easier just to kind of remember to put all your compost and organic matter into a little kind of composting bin. Now you can see that I don't use any bags or anything like that although you can get compostable bags that are meant to I think compost in a couple of days or in 10 days or something like that which can be put into your regular thing but for me this is just something extra. So as you can see we've got all sorts of food waste in here from bananas to actually flowers that we've had sitting in a vase and onions, all the stuff that we couldn't really keep to put in to make a veggie stock or anything like that. Which of course you can, if you have certain items, you can keep it and put it in the freezer and then use it to make your own homemade veggie stock, which I do have a recipe for and I'll put that down below. So I'm just gonna open up the box. This is an airtight lid, which keeps all of you know the air inside because we don't want air uh, going around it. So you open this up. Now be careful because there will be water droplets on this because of obviously the, the process that's going on inside so just be careful you don't get that all over your floor and then inside you can see this is what it looks like yeah and you can see that i put some more bokashi brown already on this morning 
um, and I, I squished it down to remove any air that's going to be in there. So now I'm going to put my new matter in with some more Bokashi brand because you want lots of it so it doesn't rot and yeah and then I'm going to squish it down. Once you've done that, you just put the lid back on and you're done. And once you've done that, you just want to make sure it's stored in a cool, dark place. So we tend to store ours just under our sink because it's away from sunlight. And then I just put a scooper on top and this underneath just in case it leaks. And that's it. So once I put it back under my sink, I'm going to continue filling it until it's got all the way up to the top. And then you're going to leave it for about two to three weeks to continue fermenting. Now, one of the most important things at this stage is to one, make sure that everything has really been squished down so there's no air in your organic matter. And then you also need to make sure again that you really need to have enough bran in there to help the fermentation process. And what will happen is there'll come a like little white I guess it looks a bit like a mass of spider webs that will kind of form on the top and that's really good. That's exactly what you want. Now every few days you also need to make sure you turn that tap on and you need to make sure that you are, you're releasing the water or the sort of liquid from inside. Because if it's too wet then it won't break down properly and it will start to rot and that's when you'll get a really bad smell. Now this is one of the good reasons why you can keep it in your flat because it should not smell. And if it does start to smell, it's because it's rotting and it's not, and it's because it's not fermenting properly. So that's again why one of the Bokashi things is a really good idea. Now, one thing I will say is that I did not find this to be the cheapest option. And I personally think that you can create it yourself. You just need to make sure that you have a bucket and an airtight lid and also um, install a tap in there. Because again, some of the most important things with this is to make sure that it's not wet, to make sure there's no air circulating through and just to make sure that the seal on the top is super tight so that no bugs can get in and no animals and no air. I also do have another kind of bucket that I do use as an additional but it's not airtight at all so I just had to leave the matter in there for much much longer but I can leave that outside my flat in this kind of like cubby hole area which I'll show you. Um, as you walk in because it's not disturbing anyone or anything, which is obviously great. Now, after two to three weeks of leaving it in there, you're going to need to dispose of it somehow. And when I say dispose, I don't mean chuck it in the bin. I mean putting it outside in a composting system outside that you have or uh, take it to a farmer's market if that's possible or some way dispose of it because you can't just keep it inside, obviously all the time because that's not practical. I am lucky enough, as I said at the beginning of this video, to be able to have an outside kind of huge composting space where the gardener put all of the like leaves and stuff like that and I go and put it underneath there and I make sure that I bury it. If you do have a garden space and you want to plant things and you want to make food or grow food, you can create some kind of beds where you put a third of sort of soil, natural soil, and then put your fermented bokashi on top of it and then another layer of soil and leave that for about two weeks and then you'll be able to plant stuff on top of it. So it's a great way of reusing all of the kind of stuff that you've not been able to eat to then create more food for yourself. You can also again use this if you're having pot plants inside but you have to be very careful with it and I would definitely research a little bit more before trying to do something like that. My friend Laura doesn't have a garden and so she sneaks across to her neighbors who obviously she has permission from and she buries it in their garden instead because they have the space. If you don't have a composting system outside, you can bury it as well, but you have to make sure it's been fermenting for about two to three weeks first. Um, but yeah, if you obviously don't have a space, like this is not suitable for everyone. This is just the system that suited me best, so I thought I would share that with you. One of the other things that you can do is to freeze everything and take it to a farmer's market if you are lucky enough to have one near you. Or in London, there are loads of councils that do have a collection service. And there are also community gardens around that you could 
get in touch with and see if they will take your compost. Or of course you can, if you have nothing available to you right now, write a letter to your local council and sort of demand basically that they set up a composting system. And if you send them a letter or an email, you know, once a week until they respond, <laughs> I find that that's a really good way of putting pressure on the people who should be helping you to compost because composting should be something that is available to everyone. And unfortunately at the moment, it's just not, which is, a, a disgrace to be honest. Food waste is one of the biggest issues that we are facing and to be able to at least compost that material and make sure that it's being reused rather than going to landfill where it's actually a lot more harmful for the environment. So we really need to be able to compost that stuff. So if it's nothing available to you, get onto your local MPs, onto your local councils and make sure that you are lobbying. One of the other things that you can do, of course, is if you do have a bit of outdoor space but not like a lot at all, you can have a huge bucket or whatever and just fill everything up and leave it there for months and months and months and months and then that will actually itself turn back into more material that you can use. Just mix it with a bit of soil. I know this isn't helpful for everyone and unfortunately I wish I had a solution for everyone but unfortunately I don't. This is just what I have and what I'm able to use and I hope you found this useful. I will leave links below. This is not a sponsored post, this is just something that I have personally been able to find has been the most efficient for my living situation. Anyway, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and let me know what kind of videos you'd like to see in the comments below because I wanna be making stuff that's useful for all of you guys. Please give it a thumbs up, share, comment and subscribe and I will see you very, very soon. Bye.